By now, we've all heard about the tympanic titanic implosion, but can humans successfully be rescued from submarines? Here's four times we did it right. In 1944, the USS Tang was cruising the Pacific surf, tickling Japanese transports with torpedoes. After a long night of laughs, the Tang fired her last torpedo. However, this torpedo had a bit of a queer steer and went <laughs> around to take the Tang in the rear. The captain and the rest of the bridge officers nobly abandoned ship, leaving 30 men to crowd into the forward torpedo room to play bridge while the tang's rear got filled and sank her to 180 feet. Just when they thought the banging had stopped, the Japanese started dropping depth charges around them, causing things to get hotter than me running a wet t-shirt contest including your mother when she was younger. They tried to escape using the forward escape trunk, but there was a lot of junk in the way, and only 13 managed to escape to the surface using primitive rebreathers. Then, a Japanese destroyer came along and used a highly complex method to select which of the 13 enlisted and 9 officers would come on board, and which would stay in the ocean for the sharks so the Japanese could come back later for their fins. Yes, I know that's actually the Chinese. Once on board, the selected 5 enlisted and 4 officers discovered the survivors from last night's tickle session were also on board, and those guys spent the trip back to Japan all over the Americans like Pope Alexander VI on his daughter, or a Catholic nut on your favorite nephew. Finally, the Americans awarded the captain with a Medal of Honor for his bravery and skill after shooting his own sub in the butt and leaving his men to die in it. Seriously, can't make this up. A similar sub exodus through an escape trunk occurred in 1988 when a Japanese fishing trawler saw a submarine of the same class and decided to ram them. The main differences were that A, the sub was now Peruvian, and B, its captain cowardly sacrificed himself to secure the bridge access hatch and saved most of his crew. Just like the Ocean Cake guy, he went down with his sub. Wilhelm Bauer achieved the first submersion reversion in 1851. Bauer and his two sidekicks sank his tiny submarine in 60 feet of water and couldn't open the escape hatch because of all the pressure water was putting on him. Then, he remembered what his therapist told him about his relationship with water and decided to let water in, thus equalizing the air pressure inside with the water pressure outside and, once the hatch was opened, expelling them from their petite penitentiary faster than a gay kid from a Catholic family. USS Squalus was moseying along in 1939 when its air snorkel decided to change careers and become a water siphon, helping 26 of the crew become more intimately acquainted with the ocean. Fortunately, this sort of thing happened all the time to submariners, so the Navy had built a handy-dandy rescue chamber. They found the Squalus' sinking marker buoy, once again happened all the time, reached 243 feet down into the ocean with it, and latched onto the subhatch like a Catholic priest onto your favorite nephew. The rescue chamber went squalls deep four times in 13 hours, and came back with 33 seamen, a level of endurance to make any mermaid want to be part of their world. In 1973, two guys named Roger were laying some transatlantic cable together 1,600 feet under the sea southwest of Ireland. Unfortunately, they were using a sub, Pisces 3, that had already sank before. Absolutely astonishing everyone, a compartment of Pisces 3 filled with water again. So an international coalition of sub Avengers had 64 hours to save the day, a team including Pisces 2, Pisces 5, and Curve 3. The rope holding Pisces 2 snapped while lifting it into the water, damaging it, much like my father teaching me to swim after I spilled orange juice on his Blackberry. Pisces 5 took two attempts to find them, but failed to attach the rescue cable to help the Pisces crew pull out. Pisces 2 attempted to assist after repairs, but suffered a leak. Curve 3 finally arrived, then suffered an electrical issue and had to abort its dive. Our heroes valiantly continued like this for 82 hours before Curve 3 finally snatched P3 up with a cable like a Catholic Inquisitor snatching a Jew, and rescued Roger Squared with 12 minutes of air to spare. Double checking my calculator, I'm not sure how that math works, but that's what the book says. I guess sometimes you were remembered for the rules you broke. Anyways, those are four times plebs rose to the occasion better than their harder working financial superiors. Looks like you need an escape trunk or to be stuck in less than 2,000 feet of water. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't like it because you thought it sank to new depths or because you're Catholic, please let me know why in the comments below.